and circumstance in Great Britain today. That's right, Queen Elizabeth turning 96, been Queen of Great Britain for an amazing 70 years. We're here to celebrate the royal milestone today. Royal commentator Thomas Mace Archer Mills, founder of the, did I say that right? British Monarchist Society. So good morning to you, how you doing? Yes, good morning, New York in the Tri-State area. How are you? We are doing well. Can you just keep talking? Yes, how, <laughs> how is the Queen celebrating 96 years today? Well, the Queen is not in London today. She's actually gone to her private estate at Sandringham, where she has decided to be at Wood Farm, where Prince Philip, the late Duke of Edinburgh, spent a lot of time. So feeling a little lonely and wanting to be close to him, she's off to celebrate this special day, out in, in Norfolk. So uh, still plenty of celebrations going on. I just came back from the Tower of London and covering the gun salute there. Uh, so much happening today, but oh goodness, 70 years as queen, uh, 96 years today for her birthday, 15 countries of total as head of state. What more could one woman want? <laughs> Sincerely, so how, how, are, how are people over there viewing her at this point? I mean, how and how are they celebrating her? Well, uh, this is something. How do you celebrate the most celebrated stateswoman in history or statesman mm -hmm. in history? I mean, this woman has given her life and dedicated service to her people. And it's about thanks and gratitude. Maybe some of the old grumblings from earlier on in her reign. Everything is forgiven. The loss of her husband, we've seen her become a little more frail. Uh, of course, 96, we only want our grandparents to enjoy their life. And considering the way that she's been with her health lately, we are wondering not if, but when that day will come, she's no longer with us. So yeah. it's time for the people here to really just embark on celebration events. And, and we've done that. Last night, we had a fantastic celebration for her on the eve of her birthday. And uh, we've created a new Jubilee anthem. A lot of people are celebrating today. Uh, they are singing the national anthem. They're visiting the royal parks or some of the royal palaces, such yeah. as the Fortress of the Tower, gun salutes. But the big, big party will be the Central Jubilee weekend. In so, you know, obviously, in, in your 96 years, you're going to go through some drama. And she has weathered <laughs> a lot of family turmoil, Princess Diana. Now her son, Prince Andrew's ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Prince Harry leaving the royal family. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer here, but does she have any relationship now with Andrew? Like, how, what are the family dynamics at this time? Well, first and foremost, the Queen is a human. She's a mother, a daughter, a sister, a wife, an aunt. When it comes down to it, she is a member of a family, a family that is in the eye all the time of the public. And uh, with her religious undertones and who she is as head of the church, forgiveness is one of the, the very big values that she holds dear. So regardless of what Andrew has done or hasn't done, she's right there to say, look, you're still a member of my family. We are still a family unit. And I need to put this family on track as the Windsors, as the royal family of this country. So uh, she's very much trying to set everything straight and forward before we no longer have her to do so. She's the one constant in the equation of the United Kingdom. Yeah, so what about her relationship with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? I know that they are there, there or were there with her. Yes, they stealth in, stealth out, <laughs> and uh, under the radar. Uh, it actually brought warm fuzzies to everybody here. Oh, that's uh, good. Uh, so much has gone down. What we think is true, what we know is true, two very different stories, but the truth is only known between the family. And for him to come and say, look, Granny, I, I want to see you. We want to see you. I know you support us as a young couple. Uh, maybe things weren't exactly the way we wanted them to be, but we don't have a lot of time. Uh, I wasn't here for my grandfather's memorial or, or things like that. So it is repairing whatever damage is done. Mm. I think he, he is a bit frail, yeah. and uh, you water over the dam at this point. So, you know, you, you're what we call a monarchist, right? But you're actually from upstate New York, Glens Falls. I'm really very proud. North of all people. <laughs> George, very proud of my New York State, upstate New York yeah. heritage. So how does one then go from upstate New York to become a British royal authority? Ah, well, that's a great question. I wonder myself. But so now my mother and her family, they're all British, um, British, Irish, uh, British descent. So it's run in my family on my mother's side. Uh, where I grew up in Lake George, as most people there will know, 
is built on British history. Bolton Landing is built on land grants from King George II. The lake is named after him. Some of the most beautiful scenery in New York is upstate at Bolton Landing on Lake George. Mm-hmm. So it, it's been a hobby of mine, runs in my family. My late grandmother always loved the Queen, is a very big tea drinker. And from when I was little, we <laughs> muffin out there. So what goes better with my family than tea and learning about the royals and taking a career of spanning over 20 years of royal history? Yeah, well, your British Monarchist Society actually has a record coming out to mark the Queen's platinum anniversary on the throne. So let's listen to a quick clip. Uh, oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> to do this and what are you going to do with the music? Uh, I'm just singing that tune in my head. I, I, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, to work with National Treasure Leslie Garrett CBE, who has been honoured by the Queen, uh, the UK's number one most recognised soprano, Rodney Earl Clark debuting, well he's not debuting, he's in the West End's Les Mis now, uh, oh, Dr. Wow. Ob- the Queen's private composer to Her Majesty and the Royal Family, Anton uh, Vandermeer, who actually composed what you've just heard. We wanted to celebrate Her Majesty in a way that would reach as many people as possible. And what better to take 70 years of a reign than put all that history in four minutes of song. (laughs) So it's a way for us to reach as many people to really capture what the public are feeling toward Her Majesty, not just in her realms, but all over. And the special relationship with the Queen herself and America I think this song will really touch the hearts of everyone, not just in the New York area, but the greater United States, because she truly is the queen of the world. Mm -hmm. There's only one queen, even though there are several other queen regnants, but when you say the queen, we all know it's Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the music that's gone into it, uh, the the lyricism, it's, okay, I'm a co-lyricist, so I'm not trying to... (laughs) Well, yeah. Um, But it is history, and we've actually done a, a progression. And when we talk about the Queen's unblemished face, the Queen's maturing face, so these sorts of lyrics actually give the progression of when she was princess to queen and queen now 70 years later. All right. So it's just a great piece of work, and I hope you all enjoy it as much as we do. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. We appreciate your time. Founder of British Monarchist Society, thank you again for being with us on Queen Elizabeth's 96th birthday. Thank happy birthday you. to her. Yes, happy birthday, Your Majesty. Happy birthday. All right, now we have a bit of a